Hello everyone, here we are with another Physics 30 example. Uh, this time we're in Unit 3, which is Electromagnetism, and this is Lesson 3, which is Magnetism. So this is just a follow-on from our class, uh, just going through a couple of examples, making sure that we're able to um, communicate the correct field lines from a, from a magnet, uh, and then of course what uh, orientation a compass would be in given those field lines. So here's a couple of example questions just to kick things off. Here's A, we have a bar magnet and we're asked to find the magnetic field and the north part of the test compass. So typically when we draw a compass we're going to represent it with an arrow and the arrow head is going to be the north. So if I was to draw a compass right here uh, this arrow would be pointing to the north. Okay, and we hopefully can recall that that doesn't make a lot of sense unless we understand that the north pole of our Earth is actually a south magnetic pole. So this would be the north end of a, of a bar magnet, essentially on the compass, and that would be the south. And so this would point towards the, towards the south magnetic pole, which is the northern pole, or the north pole that we typically refer to. Okay, so if I was to draw the direction of the magnetic field on my, on my bar magnet, I'm going to draw that with blue dotted lines. And we know that blue dotted lines represent the fields, and they're going to go away from the north. So these blue field lines are going to head away from the north and towards the south. So they're going to curl around here, going away from the north. Same with this one. They're going to be going this way, away from the north. OK. So what does that mean for our compass? Well, our compass is a mini bar magnet. And so the mini bar magnet is going to want to align itself in the lowest energy state. In other words, the north is going to be attracted to the south and the south is attracted to the north. So pretty clear to see. Let me just um, make a little bit of space here in our, in our uh, compasses. Pretty clear to see that the this bar magnet, this sorry, this compass over here on the right side, the the northern end of that compass is going to point towards the south end of the bar magnet, and then over here on the left side, the compass is going to point away from the bar magnet because the south side of the compass is going to be attracted to the north pole of the magnet. This is the lowest energy state that these magnets can be in. Okay, now one observation and following on from our lesson is that we, we can say that a compass will align itself with the field, which means if we think about the compass placed underneath the bar magnet, this one underneath here, if I was to keep drawing my field lines, this one's going to be going away from the north. And so the natural extension is to say that the north pole of this compass is going to be attracted, so this north pole of the compass is going to be attracted to the south, and the south pole of the compass is going to be attracted to the north. So once again, you can see that these compasses are aligning themselves with the field. That's kind of crucial. Okay, next example over here, example B. Here we're asked just to look at the magnetic field vectors and add them together. And then we're going to give a, a net vector sum uh, description of this position P in the middle of these three magnets here. I should also mention that these magnets are only representing half of a, of a magnet. There's no such thing as a monopole, so this would be half of a magnet. In other words, there would be, there would be a south pole over here. Same with the blue south poles. We can kind of think about them being broken. There would be a north over here and there would also be a north over here. Either way, we're only focusing on one end of the bar magnet. So let's think about what's happening with these fields. Once again, we can represent them as 
dotted lines, dashed lines, and the field line is going to go towards the south. So there's a field line here. There would be a field line here. And in terms of the north, well, the northern field line goes away from the north. So restating that as a result from position P, I can just add these uh, field vectors together. I'm going to call these 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to add, let's put this one on here. This is number 1. Then I'm going to do number 3. And then I'm going to do number 2. Okay, and there we go. We can see that then the net direction is going to be the resultant of this triangle. And so this would be the net. I'm going to write this as, uh, oops, B magnetic field net. Okay, so for our third example here, um, we're asked to think about the domain theory of magnetism and explain why a magnet will stick to a fridge door. Um, what we need to do here is think about what's happening with the, with the door um, and how that interacts with the magnet before they come into contact. So let's just quickly sketch out, um, well, let's just do a copy here of the fridge door. So I'm just going to copy the fridge door, bring it over here. And this is the fridge door now before. Okay, so this is going to be without the magnet in place. So this is before the magnets even come close. We can represent the, um, the, the atomic structure of the fridge as being just a random alignment of, of spins. And we know that spin has a relationship with magnetic uh, polarity in that we, we talk about electrons and protons having spin, and when they have spin, they, they do have this magnetic behavior. I'm not gonna say anything more about that for now, it's a little bit mysterious for us, but let's just leave it at that and say that anytime we represent an atom, we can think about it as a mini magnet. So, there's these mini magnets, and they're randomly all over the place. In other words, the fridge door itself is not magnetic, right? You can bring some non-magnetic material up to a fridge door and it will not stick. The fridge is not magnetic. However, if you introduce a magnetic field to this random uh, alignment of spins, these, these atoms, if you like, these, um, the, the spin behavior of these atoms will behave a little bit like the compass, they will align themselves with the field. So if we now represent the field that would be um, evident by the presence of the bar magnet over here, now we can think about the field lines and how they would affect these little mini magnets inside the metal itself. So let's just represent the field lines with dotted, dotted or dashed lines. Remember that they're going to go towards and towards the south and away from the north. Just like this. Just like this. And then I'll probably do a couple coming in from over here. I'm gonna make sure I label these all going towards the south pole. Okay, so the little black arrows now, these represent the atoms in the metal fridge door. These are now going to be influenced by this, these field lines. So you can think about these, these arrows now aligning themselves with the field. So they're all now going to point this way, just like a compass would. And that's going to create a net effect where we have a concentration of these arrows at the point with which the south pole of the magnet touches the fridge door. And since these are behaving just like compasses, we can think about them just like a compass, the net effect in the middle here, this cluster, is to create almost like a north, a north pole of a magnet. And so now you can see that there's going to be a force between the south, let me just clear a bit of space, 
there's going to be a force between the south pole of the bar magnet and the induced magnetic field in the fridge door. I'm just going to use a different colour. Let's go with green. There's going to be a force. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted this. There's going to be a force here. You're going to feel there's going to be an FB. Uh, 